This show is brought to you by Manscaped. Use the code AFTV for 20% off your order and free shipping at manscaped.com. AFTV, um, James, disappointing today. Game over again within five minutes, <laughs> just like Aston Villa the other day. Yeah, I'm, fu- I'm furious, Rob. I, I really, I'm, I have no words for that. You're not part of the brigade that says, oh, well, it was only 1-0, you know what I mean? At least we didn't concede 5-6. No, I'm not even really part of the brigade that says, well, I saw some good things. Okay, yeah, maybe. In fact, there were what some. Good things? Well, exactly. I don't know. I don't know. Last 10 minutes of the first half, maybe, if we're really digging. Um, I'm borderline disgusted by that performance. Um, you know me, I'm quite positive. Mm. I normally turn up and I'll, I'll look at, well, this wasn't as bad and we're overacting about this, whatever. But what and disgusted you? Well, I'll tell you what, all respect to Man City, who are clearly a brilliant side. Absolutely. But I kept hearing the commentators on TV saying, oh, well, Arsenal have given it a go. They've made it competitive. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Man City had us like this the whole time. They were taller than us and we were down just throwing punches and getting nowhere near. Well, not actually, we weren't. We were down. We weren't even throwing punches. That's the thing. They're not taller than us, but they are when it comes to crosses. Well, there you go. Yeah, apparently. (laughs) Exactly. And... I mean, okay, it's a defensive error from Holding, I think. Some people are looking at Bellerin, but there's someone behind Bellerin. So Holding's made a big error for that. Um, that's three games in a row he's started now, where he's, I think, had a big part to play in the goal we've conceded. But there's still, what, 92 minutes left of a match after that. And we didn't lay a glove on him. We didn't. I heard Thomas Tuchel saying something about Chelsea the other day. In fairness, he was being a bit critical of Hudson Odoi, but he said, um, if you're not creating, you're not making things happen, then resort to a press, try force an error, chase him, do something. We had nothing. There was genuinely nothing performance. Me, you and Cecil were debating um, on the live, should we have a go or should we park the bus? We didn't either. <laughs> we didn't either. Mm. We didn't park the bus and try and protect our goal and throw everything in front and keep a clean sheet, um, but we also didn't have a go at them. So I'm left completely and utterly uninspired by what I saw today. Yeah, it was an uninspiring performance and, you know, in, listen, I, I get why he's gone with two holding midfielders. I understand yeah. it. You're up against Manchester City. But did he take too long to change it? Yeah. Because, you know, all right, we conceded, so that hasn't quite worked. After half time, have a go. Yeah. Have a go. He's still the two holding midfielders. They get the ball. They slow it down. He's played right into City's hands. Yeah. You're one nil up. You ain't got to force nothing. Mm. You know, I mean, we, we, Arteta's got to react quicker with his substitutions, doesn't he? Yeah, and react to the word there. He, he had to see that we weren't laying a glove on them. He had to do something sooner. Danny Sabas, I think, is really bright the last few games. That was a, mm. a really good game to bring him into. You know, oh, OK, I get it. You want to start El Nenny? Fine. You want to rest Sabas? You want a bit of a more workman-like midfielder in there? Fine. I get that. I don't know why El Nenny was playing behind our centre-backs a lot of the game. That was really weird. Um, but OK. Then you look at the starting 11 and there's a few things that worry me there. Um, now, you know, let's just caveat this by saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't get rid of Arteta. I actually, I think he's turned things around to a degree. I'm seeing slight improvements. I'd give him another summer and see how he does. But on this game alone, I'm really disappointed by him because he made changes and I understand why. But this is now, I know Pepe started, but this is the third game in a row he's not started on the left where he was playing so well before. Mm. So actually, the Pepe we were seeing when he was in good form, we didn't even give him the chance to do that today because we chucked him back on the right. But Saka was doing so well on the right and he played him on the mm. left. Lacazette has been playing really well, dropping into midfield, working really hard, bringing in wingers like Saka and Pepe. But he goes to the Bamiang today, who, okay, scored a hat-trick against Leeds, but didn't really do anything against Benfica. And I'm thinking, well, what's Lacazette done wrong suddenly? Um, he completely changed the centre-backs. Mary's not played for over a month. Holding, he clearly didn't favour. Well, he's some, of, he's some of this, though, because he's got one eye on that game on Thursday. We've got to caveat that. Yeah. I, I mean, there was a lot of people calling for the team to be even weaker than it yeah. was today because they looked on it and said, listen, this game, just a free it, but the big one is mm. Thursday against Benfica. Absolutely, Lose yeah. that and the season's over. Yeah, look. Hindsight's wonderful. Mm. Hindsight's wonderful. I can, I can sit here now, we've lost, and pick apart everything. But, you know, do, do Gabriel or Luis really need a rest? Neither of them have had really prolonged runs in the team, or at least not for a long time. So did you have to change both? Um, Cedric, he's only really been playing the last month. So why is Bellerin starting? Oh, Bellerin was awful today. Can't, can't, he just couldn't control mm. them. He couldn't, he couldn't get anywhere near Sterling. He couldn't do anything on the ball. He looked, he looked terrible. Um, 
And so, yes, he had one eye, but then Saka played. Saka's played every game. The guy's knackered. Like, you know, give him a rest. Play Martinelli. Keep talking about how he's the future. Play Martinelli or put a Bameng on the wing and bring in Lacazette. I just think, again, I just said it. Hindsight's wonderful, but nothing really adds up. Was it a team designed to rest players? Well, you think Odegaard's going to play against Benfica. You think Saka's going to play. You think Tierney's going to play. So really, he didn't really rest the players who really should be rested. Um, uh, you know, and, and again, he reacted too slowly with the subs. So, yeah, disappointed with the manager, disappointed with the overall, uh, the body language of the players. They're kind of like, uh, Bamiyang, I know he's never been a really physical player, and like, this guy's carried us. We wouldn't be in Europe without him, let's just say that. But there were just times where he was sort of shoulder to shoulder the defender, mm. and he just didn't, you know, he didn't get anywhere near it. And I'm thinking, even if you've got to be legally just a little bit nasty, just a little something, show him that you're not going to give him an easy ride. And we gave City a really easy ride, partly down to their brilliance. I acknowledge that, um, but partly because we just didn't have the stomach for it today. I just thought we looked really passive. And at home, I don't care where we are, 10th, 18th, 2nd in the league, wherever you are, Arsenal at home should never be that passive.